Well, after Father had that straight eight Pontiac, he, uh, he got a Chevrolet car, just a two-door one, and uh, he didn't like it very much, so he traded it next year, got another one, a four-door one. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, I guess after that I've kind of lost track of what he what he had. How many, how, about how many cows were you milking then at that time? Well, you know, I'd say in the 15 to 18 or 19. So most of what he was making money from was fr from uh, planting and selling Vegetables, was it, or what? Well, not very much matter no vegetables. He probably had a few potatoes to sell every year, but nothing, nothing big. I think he depended pretty much on on uh, his milk check. Mm -hmm. Pretty much cream, or I mean, we separated the milk and sold the cream. And, fed the milk to the calves and pigs and stuff like that. Mm. And he, I say he usually, he usually kept a few pigs, no big amount, but you know, you have a litter or two a year. But, uh, yeah. How old were you then when you went to work for your brother Lee? Well, I, I don't know really. I wasn't too old, I guess. I'd finished I'd finished school. I only went to grade eight, I guess. And uh, well back then every every area, district that was divided into school districts and every community more or less had to raise its own money for schools and uh, one thing or another and we lived in Westmont County and the high school was in Kings County and there was always a squabble whether they'd let students from Westmont County go to school in Kings County okay. and I wasn't very anxious to go anyway, I guess, like most boys were. Mm -hmm. Where would that high school have been? Well, it was in Havelock. In Havelock, okay. Pretty much where the schools are now. Uh-huh. And, uh, well, it was about that time, I guess, the league got married and, and uh, he bought a farm down there at Penobscus, or Macaulay Station really is what it was known as then. And uh, I don't know how or why I went down there to work for with him or for him or something. Don't know what the deal was. And anyway, I there were two, you know, there were two Baptist churches in Penobscot, and that came from, you know, there were two Baptists. There were the Calvinist Baptists and the Free Will Baptists. Free Will Baptists, and they, I guess, joined to make the United Baptist Church, mm -hmm. and they, so there were two churches there. And they had had some trouble in the Penobscot Church. They, uh, I don't know what it was. It was just some of the young people acting up, and the pastor didn't respond too well <laughs> to them. Yeah. And anyway, he left, and I was the uh, had been the president of the Young People's Society. And, the deacons of the church, instead of getting somebody to 
take the services, they would just ask the young people to do it. Mm. And uh, there was a fair, fair number, nothing big, I suppose a dozen or 15 young people there. And I was the president of the young peoples. So they would ask, the deacons would say, let the young people have it. They didn't have a pastor, so and I was the president of the young peoples and I had to do something. And that's how I got started preaching. Hmm, okay. And uh, after doing that a while, I sort of came to the conclusion that perhaps that's what the Lord wanted me to do. Hmm. So I didn't have, let's say I never went to high school. I guess I had taken a bit of grade nine, maybe, there in the Hicks Settlement School. And, uh, well, I'd been, I'd been working down there with Lee, and then I went up to, to Lower Brighton there with Russell Brown. He was a, he was a very well-educated man, a very smart man. That he was a cripple, and uh, he couldn't get around much unless somebody helped him, or he could walk like around the table if he could keep his hands on it and so on. So he wanted something to do, so I went there and stayed with them, did chores around the farm, and when they, when Arnold was, uh, of course, planted some potatoes, no big amount, but a few acres, I don't know how many now. But he got into to raising turnip seed. He would plant turnips like this year, and he didn't, he didn't want them to get too big. And uh, then he'd harvest them and plant, put the turnips out, plant them the next year and they would blossom and produce seed. And he did a pretty good thing out of that. I don't know whether he sold them through a co-op or what. Hmm. But uh, anyhow, back then really you were supposed to write what they called matriculation papers before you could uh, go on to college. So anyway, I went into Woodstock and wrote those papers and passed them. I didn't quite get into the highest grade, but I came in the second grade, missed the first grade by a little bit. But anyway, uh, we went from there to Bethany, and Bethany was in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia then, 